Hello, I'm Frances Pinter. I've been in academic publishing all my professional life, and I'm worried. I'm very worried about the future of the book, in particular in the social sciences and the humanities. Like you, I've seen the benefits of the internet, but I've also seen how we might just be closing down access to scholarly works. If we continue as we are, replicating the old print model in the digital realm, we're going to be exacerbating the digital divide. The sector that I'm looking at is what gets traditionally referred to as the book in the social sciences and humanities. Nowadays, probably better called the long form publication. That's because in the digital realm, we can take the covers off the books and make them so much more. We've all been struggling with the question of how to fund the publishing and dissemination. Are we to remain locked in the old model of selling individual units one by one by one? I don't think so. At least I hope not. I think we can do better. I've been trying to figure out how we can do better. I've looked at some of the new models such as the open access models in STM journal publishing, the gold and the green. I've looked at subsidies, I've looked at grants, but all of these seem inappropriate for the long form publication. I've even considered bypassing professional publishers. But all the studies I've read have shown that academics still want the professional input of publishers. They want the selection, the peer review, the branding, the copy editing, the formatting, the marketing, and the selling. So I took a journey and went looking for who pays for academic publishing now. And I found where the money is. It's actually in the university libraries. So I asked myself, how could we make library budgets go further, be used more effectively, and also achieve wider access. So here's the idea I'd like to put to you. I hope you'll engage with it and let me have some feedback. I would like to see the creation of an international library consortium that pays for the upfront fixed costs that a publisher incurs. This amounts to roughly one third of the cost of a library book. In exchange for this payment, the publisher would be expected to publish online on a Creative Commons non-commercial license. The publisher would also be able to sell print copies and other digital formats. It would also have the opportunity to create enhanced ebooks, again, something that could be sold. At Bloomsbury Academic, where I was the founding publisher, we do exactly this. And it works. We sell enough of the print and the ebook versions to make a profit. And now we're not alone. Other publishers have followed this model too. But if all publishers adopted this model, we'd still be no further forward because we'd still be relying on the same dwindling library budgets to buy our individual units one by one, by one. And we'd be spending a fortune trying to sell those books to libraries. In the consortium model, a fixed fee would be paid to the publisher upon publication. The cost to each library would depend on the size of the consortium. Let me run you through the arithmetic. Let's take a hypothetical book at, say, $80. This kind of book Publishers generally sell roughly 400 copies to libraries. So the cost to each individual library is $80, but cumulatively $32,000. Now, if this consortium were to pay the fixed costs of, say, $10,000, and even if only 400 libraries were a part of this consortium. The cost of this book would be $25.
to each library. If the consortium had a thousand members, just think, the cost of each book to each library would be $10 only. The mechanism for implementation would be a very simple one. It would work on the principle of aggregating demand. Publishers would submit titles on a monthly or quarterly basis in much the same way that they promote titles now. Once a critical number of libraries bought into a particular title, it would trigger the purchase. This would work very much along the lines of Groupon, a model that has done very well indeed. Skeptics have immediately cried, what about the free rider? Well, my answer to that is member libraries should be given something more. Extra metadata, perhaps the book in another digital format. There are ways of ensuring that members feel they've gotten good value for money. I believe that this model, or something like it, can only lead to a win-win situation. Let's look at the benefits. To the libraries, they'll get vastly more content for the same amount of money. And it will be recognized that they're making a major contribution to opening up access to the whole world. For the authors, the benefits are that they will be professionally published. They will also find that their work will be more easily discoverable on open access. And they will have the opportunity to earn royalties through the sales of their books in print and in other digital formats. For publishers, the benefits are a secured income stream with improved cash flow and greatly reduced risk. They'll also be able to work on enhanced ebooks, again, another source of income for them. And readers, let's not forget the reader. They will have access to quality research wherever they are, as long as they have access to the internet. All we need to do to make this a reality is to change our mindsets and move forward to new business models, making the best use we can of the digital. If you'd like to know more about this, or indeed get involved, please contact me. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.